Well, I have kind of a disappointing update to the stone that I was working on during my last live stream. I finished it and, you know, finished it up relatively easily after pointing it out on the stream. But it just doesn't look good to me. I think it, it windows quickly. It's very lackluster in terms of color and sparkle. And here, there's a bit of flash in, in the white. But if I take it out of this holder here, you can see there's the, it windows very quickly. But I mean, that's, that's tilting. Uh, that happens with all stones. But it's really just one dimensional, in my opinion especially when comparing it with another stone, which is the exact same cut in a similar, it's the same uh, quartz. Let's see, try and get them aligned well enough here. And it's so shiny, it doesn't want to focus. I'll have it focus on there, okay. So I think this smoky quartz just looks so much better than this amethyst I'm in my left hand here. There's more depth to it in a good way. And like in the bottom of the amethyst on the left, there's kind of a little circle in the bottom. Whereas in the smoky, it's a little bit dark perhaps, but it goes away in certain lights. And I don't know, I just like it a lot better. Whereas the, the amethyst, I don't know. It's something about it, it's doing me wrong. So now I'm going to put the, this pair of red pliers kind of near the stone. And right now it's probably half an inch to an inch behind the stone. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but we're already seeing some of the red from the pliers showing up in the reflection on the margins here. And that's because the light is bouncing off the interior of the stone and escaping from the stone, which is why it's kind of lackluster on the outside. It's a lot less vibrant than it should be. And as I bring the, right now, the pliers are about parallel. And you can see the red kind of flashing inside the stone there. And I was kind of disappointed to discover that with the stone. Well, obviously you want all the stones that you cut to be really nice, but I cut this other this is another amethyst. So all these so far have been quartz. This is another amethyst cut in the same style as that other one. It's a little bit smaller, which might help with it getting a little more leeway in the, the eye of the beholder, which is me in this case. But we'll zoom back in here. And I don't think it suffers from the same problems as that other stone. It's, there's more flash, there's more vibrancy, and I don't know if it's just because, you know, stones are, stones have personalities, more or less, and some of them just kind of cut dead, in a way. You can do what you want to them, but they won't all become vibrant, and, you know, sometimes it's the axis that you cut them on, but quartz, I thought, was, wasn't that particular, and I'm wondering if these two stones that actually turned out well with similar designs are better because they're a little more saturated in color. This one's darker than, these are both darker than the uh, stone that I most recently cut. You can see this one's more purple than the bigger stone. So normally a bigger stone would cut a deeper color than a smaller stone. And one of the reasons I think that the Smoky quartz is better, is behaving better optically, is that I modified the design of this cut to make a slightly shallower crown. And unfortunately, I lost the notes for what I did, so I don't remember what the angles I used were. But this design is the same as this design that I just cut. And I think you can tell readily that this stone has a lot higher crown, the area above the girdle line here. And you can see that the quartz, or the, they're both quartz, you can see that the smoky quartz has a lot shallower table than the amethyst on the left. I also cut a thinner, nicer girdle on the left one, 
where I left the the quartz or this the smoky quartz a little bit bigger, but that doesn't really matter in terms of light play, especially at this uh, small scale difference between the two stones. And so what I think I'm going to need to do is go back and cut this amethyst with a shallower crown. I may need to reduce the angles on the pavilion as well slightly, although I think the below the girdle here they look to be very similar depths. Let's see if I can line them up. So I think they go down to about the same depth, so I might have left the pavilion alone on this one, on the, on the smoky on the right. So I think what I'll do is cut, recut the pavilion on this, and see if that brightens it up enough for my liking. Gets rid of some of that kind of, I don't know what you would call that, almost a flower effect in the middle, but not in a good way. And I'll show a relative here. On this one, I think you can see the proportions are pretty similar. The crown is, or the, the crown is just shorter because it's a smaller stone, but it's the same kind of high crown as on the amethyst on the left. And I brought this to the attention of a, a faceting forum that I'm part of, and they recommended kind of what I did, what I did with the smoky here that you want a lower crown for a lower refractive index stone, which quartz is a refractive index of 1.54, which is kind of on the low end. And so for this is a modified kind of standard round brilliant cut. And so you'd want a lower version or a lower angle version of that to work. Where in the background here, I have another amethyst and I'll have to clean these off because I'm getting finger smudges all over them. This one is a really rich purple. It windows kind of quickly, or maybe I'm just not holding it up. Yeah, you can see it, it windows kind of quickly, which might be an effect of the design. And the crown height relative to the size of the stone is a lot smaller than the pavilion. Like the proportional crown to pavilion ratio is a lot lower. Yeah, lower as opposed to the stone that I just cut where, you know, these pavilions are similar depth. This one's a little bit deeper, but the crown on this much larger stone, well, it's, yeah, it's, it's still larger, but yeah, this larger stone has a shallower crown in order to get a better light return and, you know, a little more vibrancy in the stone. This will be the first recut of a stone that I do. I have another one kind of waiting in the wings of a sunstone that fractured and I'll have to cut it a shallower crown as well. But fortunately with recuts, especially where the stone is totally finished, you have a nice flat uh, table to use as your you know, starting point. So I'll put that on a flat top and then come down with my transfer jig and mount the pavilion and that should go relatively straightforward. I could have saved myself a little heartache here by trusting in the Gem Cut Studio tilt performance indicator where I have this design loaded up in my program and you can use a, an optimizing feature as well as a tilt performance to check for you know, windowing or you can see as I bring my fingers closer it kind of washes out the edge there as it, it blocks the light coming in or coming out, I guess. And it did indicate that there would be a bit of windowing along the outside edge here, and that there was some head shadow in the interior, and that it would window fairly quickly as I tilted the stone. And the head shadow is probably some of the dark regions in the center of the stone that you're seeing. What I'm gonna do is go back in to Gem Cut Studio and make a few changes to the crown and lower that to, I don't know, the triangular facets here are something like 47 degrees, so I'll lower those considerably at least 10 degrees probably, and then correspondingly lower the other uh, facets on the outside there. And we'll try to get the uh, table a little bit smaller is another thing that I was recommended to try. So I'll see if I can do that just a little bit, make that just slightly bit smaller. And then we'll see what sort of tilt performance we get uh, from that stone. 
After a bit of playing around in Gemcut Studio, it looks like I'd have to reduce the crown height by over 20 degrees to make an ideal or the best possible reflection in the stone. But then it also windows fairly quickly as you tilt it away from the direct looking on orientation. That would also require recutting the pavilion to lower that by a couple of degrees. Even a couple of degrees can make quite a difference in a stone. But what I'm going to do is take the lazy way out to start and cut in a kind of a compromise cut where I'm going to lower the angle of the crown by about 15 degrees. I think it was. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to lower the crown facets by about 15 degrees. You can see I've got it lined up here and just kind of get an idea of how much I'm going to be cutting away. Well, I decided to call an audible on this stone and change up my plan. Instead of cutting the normal design at the top of the stone, I decided to just make it a three-tier step cut and a table. They're still at the lower angles than was originally called for, and I think this stone actually looks pretty good. Definitely a lot better, at least in my opinion, than the original stone did. I'm sure if I had more facets and more angles and stuff in the top here, then it would look even better, but I think a step cut, which in this case it would be a mixed cut because it's a step cut on top and a more like brilliant pavilion on the bottom. There is a small internal fracture in one corner of the stone, which is unfortunate. In order to get rid of it, I'd have to recut the entire stone again. So I think we'll leave it at this, and thanks for watching.